Hi everyone, I'm Bit. And I'm Ash. Welcome to our haunted sweet digs. Don't worry, she's a friendly ghost. Make sure before you come in, you subscribe below or she'll haunt you. Come on in. We are in bed -Stuy. We're on the ground floor of a brownstone. We pay $19.25 a month in rent. That's a really good deal for this area right now. Back in North Carolina though, we would have paid you know, a third of that for the same space. It's about 900 square feet. We found this place through our friend who is now our landlord. We came to her housewarming and it was amazing and we asked to move in immediately. Welcome to the living room. My style is very like, I like old things. I like things that have history, things that are like maybe a little bit banged up. I prefer things to be like clean and modern and bright. Ash always loves the mid-century modern and I always love the Victorian stuff. Fussy. Yeah. <laughs> Decorative. It has a habit of collecting old glass bottles, which is really super fine, uh, is it, is it except fine? for the quantity. I can never get rid of them because she senses it. I just like feel it. I'll be in another room and I'm like, ooh, <laughs> I just got a horrible feeling just now. We like to decorate with art pieces that have been made for us by family. My great aunt Alta Sims made that oil painting. It's a copy of a lithograph that would have been popular in the 1800s. My mom was getting rid of it and I was like, don't you dare get rid of that. I got a circular saw for Ash for her birthday. I hated our old coffee table, so I was like immediately next day in the basement making a new table. I learned to build things from my dad who grew up building things on a farm. Two year olds playing with circular saws, it's, it's good. When we first moved in, this marble fireplace had been painted white and one day we were like, I wonder what's at the bottom of all that white paint. So we got a razor blade and we chipped some of it off and it was like real Carrera marble. And we thought it was gonna be like an hour project, like we were just gonna, but no, it was a month. There were just so many layers of old paint. This is our kitchen. The space is kind of weird shaped and there's not a lot of counter space. Our kitchen table we got from a place called Nightwood New York. They make custom wood pieces. This ended up being about $1,500 all told. They let us pay in multiple installments so it wasn't like a huge burden. Definitely our big splurge, but you know, we'll keep it forever. I'm a librarian. I work in a video archive for a media company. I work at a music company as a facilities person. I do a lot of the same stuff that I do around the house, which is like, uh, you know, home improvement type stuff. Here's the bathroom. I really don't like having a windowless bathroom. There are so many plants that thrive in the bathroom environment, like ferns and orchids. I just feel really sad thinking of all the things I can't grow in here because there's no natural light. This is our bedroom. We love Ikea, and <laughs> our favorite Ikea furniture is just the lowest end plain pine pieces. They just last forever, like since it's just screws and wood, you can take them apart and put them back together. Definitely the way to go. Like our bedroom was like 50 bucks. The side tables were like $11. This is also the room where we had our first experience with our ghost. The basement ghost. We were falling asleep one night and Ash was suddenly wide awake and she was like, Bit. Did you hear that? I was like, no, I didn't hear anything. She was like, something just knocked three times under my side of the bed. And I was like, you're dreaming, go back to sleep. <laughs> so then I was falling asleep and I heard it. It was just like, and I was like, Ash, I heard it. Did you hear it? She was like, no, I didn't hear it that time. When we first moved in and realized that maybe we had a ghost. We did a thing where we just sort of asked the ghost to protect the apartment instead of harming it. In the mail two days later, we got a fire extinguisher that was misdelivered to our It was house. a very literal interpretation of like protect the house, but yeah. I mean, I'll take it. Yeah, she's pretty chill though. Like as far as roommates go, she doesn't take up a lot of space. <laughs> <laughs> she's pretty quiet. This is the second bedroom, but we use it as a combination workspace and plant room. So on this side of the bookshelf is mine. I don't like about this room that it's just really narrow. It's supposed to be a second bedroom, but you can't really use it that way. If I could redo the space, I would just make it like a normal shape. This is my corner of the workroom. And this is my cozy little nook with a heater right next to me and my like favorite chair and then like all my books. This is basically where I hang out when it's cold. And this way to the backyard. When we first moved into this house, collectively as a household, we were prepping the backyard. When they tested the soil, they found out that it was actually really high in lead and arsenic, which is apparently a big issue in Brooklyn. Everything that you see that we grow to eat is in soil that we had to like carry in through our apartment in buckets. Usually we grow salad greens in there. We have a lot of herbs over here. Yeah. Strawberries, blackberries, apples, cherries. 
And I think that's a grapevine growing up the water tank. Yeah, Concord. When Trump won the election, we were like, oh, okay, it's the apocalypse. We're all gonna die. In the coming starving times, we wanna at least have some protein. So we decided to raise quail. They each produce a single egg a day. So when we have a full flock of 10 hens, that's 10 quail eggs a day. I make a lot of quail egg souffles. One thing that we're really gonna do this year is raccoon proof. Because mm -hmm. it turns out raccoons can open latches with their little hands and they're very smart. The baby quail that we have inside were hatched from these. We hatched them in an incubator and we just gathered the eggs out here. We met at a uh, party in North Carolina, a pig pickin' which is where you put a suckling pig over like a chicken wire cinder block fire, which is very southern. Yeah. So I was super nervous and I had this big plate of pork in front of me that I just couldn't eat. Too nervous to eat. Like I'm also like scared of parties, so I had like found a vantage point at the beginning where I could like sit and observe everybody and like chain smoke and like <laughs> act like I was too cool to talk to everybody. And I saw her from like across the yard. She had just shaved her head and I was like, I'm gonna talk to that one. And then Bitch just walked up to me and she's like, are you gonna eat that? And I was like, no. And she's like, okay. And then she just literally took it in her hands and <laughs> ate it. Like a wild animal. And so we were kind of like glued to each other for the rest of the party because I was like, she's awkward, I'm awkward. <laughs> like, this is gonna work. I talk to people at parties now. Yeah, congrats. Thank you. We've both grown as people. <laughs> We got married at the courthouse in Brooklyn. Gay marriage had just been legalized. We were really excited to get married. We spent like a hundred bucks on like a giant keg of beer and just invited everybody we could think of and yeah. just threw a huge party. I don't think we're gonna move until we're ready to buy a house, which yeah. could be never. Yeah, I mean, our situation is like one in a million, like beautiful situation, so. We're never gonna get a place this nice. No, and with the current market rates, we're never gonna buy a place either. <laughs>